Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So uh, in the last video we have talked about the timetable, how to start our preparation. Okay, and in this video we are going to split each and every subject. So okay, so in this video I'm going to talk exclusively about anatomy. So what are the topics to read from the textbook? And what are the topics which is given in your basic guides and how to go about the preparation and what to read and what not to read. In this way, we will divide all the 20 subjects so that it will give you a broad idea of you know how you should uh, frame a timetable and how you should uh, allocate a time for a particular topic which you feel is very important or very difficult. So if you look at anatomy, so first I'll give you the list of topics which is given or which you should read from the textbook. Okay. So these are all the things which you should read from the textbooks. So what are the topic I say now? The red ones you should read from the textbooks. So the first one if you see the bones of the skull. So the bones of the skull if you see there are unpaired and paired, right? So you should uh, uh, you should be aware of all those things and what are the communicating aspects of it. So if you look at paired, it's going to be the parietal and uh, uh, and the temporal and the unpaired is going to be the frontal ethmoidal. You have to know about all the communicating aspects of each bone and what are the ossifications of it and uh, and so on. So the next one is going to be the structures passing through each foramen. So this is very important, the most crucial thing because you know it will be very volatile. So one advice, if you ask me to remember this, I'll tell you write a piece of paper of particular foramen uh, and uh, the structures passing through the foramen, the nerves, the vessels, and the heart uh, and the uh, uh, the blood supply, right? So what are the arteries or what are the nerves or what are veins passing through a particular foramen you write in a piece of paper and you stick it to the walls and you see that on a day to day basis so that you can easily remember that this is one of the way you can uh, remember the structures passing through the foramen so the next one if you see it is going to be the interior of the skull the interior of the skull if you see it is going to be the anterior cranial fossa the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa so the anterior middle and the posterior cranial fossa it's going to be very important uh, aspects and what are the structures present there you should definitely remember it and the next one is going to be the orbit the foramen related to the orbit and what are the vessels and the structures passing through the orbit and the derivatives the ectodermal the endodermal and the mesodermal derivatives you should be aware and the maxilla and the mandible so how it develops and what are the foramen in the maxilla and mandible what are the articulations of the maxilla and mandible and what are the uh, you know the clinical aspect of it right and clinical aspect as well as the ossification of it so these are all the things you have to read and ioid bone you have to record the clinical anatomy as well as the plate anatomy and the cervical vertebrae the typical cervical vertebrae and two one two and seven are particularly important okay so the scalp uh, you know what are the layers of the scalp and what are the blood supply the nerve supply right so there is very important aspect of the scalp as well as the applied anatomy of the scalp there will be profuse bleeding right so you should understand you should know why it occurs so <clears throat> coming to the face phase is very important because you have to read about the the motor motor supply as well as the sensory supply as well as the uh, the muscles and the nerves especially the facial nerve you will read about the facial nerve as well as the artery right that is very important so face is very important you should you should you should get into the depth of the face the facial muscles what are the, what are the uh, you know particular muscle as a particular function right? you should you should be aware of that so the lacrimal apparatus yes the deep cervical fascia the deep cervical fascia that is your uh, uh, the investing layer as well as the uh, you know the pre tracheal the pre vertebral and the uh, carotid sheath uh, buccopharyngeal fascia pharyngo basilar fascia so these are all the few things which will come under the deep cervical fascia the deep cervical fascia is very important and it is you know some students will feel a little bit difficult so whenever whatever topics you feel difficult you just write it in a piece of paper you just stick it to the walls and you constantly revise that so coming to the triangles of the neck yes you should know about the anterior triangles the posterior triangles and you know the anterior triangles again as your submental uh, the digastric triangles the posterior triangle and then the suboccipital triangles okay so the, the triangles of the neck is very important and in the triangles you should also read about the sternocleidomastoid muscles next one is going to be the muscles at the back and then the contents of the vertebral canal the vertebral the contents of the vertebral canal includes mainly the vertebral artery and then the vertebral pia mater dura and the arachnoid mater okay the vertebral pia dura and arachnoid mater and then the next one is a very very important thing the cranial nerves you should be aware of all the 12 cranial nerves starting from the olfactory to the apoglossal nerves so what are the things you, you should learn about a particular nerve is you should definitely learn the, learn the nucleus of a particular nerve 
what are the nucleus present in and the functional component the general visceral afferent or general somatic afferent and then uh, the functional component of a nerve and then the intracranial aspect of it and the extracranial aspect of it as well as the applied anatomy what happens if a particular nerve is damaged or how to preserve a particular nerve in a particular surgery so next one will be the most important the middle meningeal artery what are the branches of the middle meningeal artery and what what are the branches supply the next one will be the extracranial muscles the superior rectus the medial rectus lateral rectus superior oblique inferior oblique Libeta palpebrae superioris and what are all it does and what are the nerve supply of it. So basically superiors they will intort and uh, their recti will obey the names. So I, I know you, you will, uh, every, every student will learn this in their own way. So you just learn that. And uh, the parotid gland, the parotid gland if you see it is one of the most important gland pertaining to our field especially because parotid gland you have to learn about the surface markings and uh, the structures passing through the, surf uh, the surfaces as well as the, the facial nerve will come here okay and also the applied aspect of it okay applied aspect and the next one is going to be the very important maxillary artery the first second and the third branches and also the subclavian artery and the TMG the TMG you have to learn about the uh, the movements of the TMG, the muscles associated with the TMG and articul articulating surfaces as well as the applied anatomy of the TMG. TMG is, is next most important to the mandible parotid. Okay. So the ganglions, if you see the trigeminal ganglion, the optic ganglion, submandibular ganglions. So uh, the, what are the nerves passing through each ganglions and also the secretive motor pathways. Okay. The secretive motor pathways. <coughs> the next one will be the thyroid, para parathyroid and the thymus glands. So you have to learn about the development of each gland and also the played aspect of it. So the common carotid artery, internal carotid artery, external carotid artery. So uh, you have to learn the branches of it, which you would have already learned from the above uh, uh, topics. So you should be very much aware of what are all the branches of these internal, external, as well as the common carotid arteries. And the next one will be the internal jugular wing. It is also a very important thing. The cervical flexures, which will include the phrenic nerve, and also the cervical sympathetic ganglion. So the next one will be the trachea and the esophagus. So if you look at the trachea and the esophagus, you have to learn about the, you know, a, a little bit, not too much in it. So you have to uh, look about the uh, the clinical aspect of trachea and esophagus. And the lymph nodes of adenic, this is very important. So what are all the lymph nodes which are involved? And the pre-vertebral muscles of the vertebral artery. Vertebral artery is also important. So your uh, circle of villus, you have to also learn about the circle of villus. Okay, circular villus and then the development of the teeth and the palate. So palate you have to talk about the hard palate, the soft palate, each one, the, how it develops, what are the muscles associated with the soft and hard palate, what are the applied aspect of it. And the pharynx and the larynx, the pharyngeal muscles, the laryngeal muscles and the, how, how does pharynx and larynx develop and then you also know, you should know about the, uh, you know, the chileans, the hisans as well as, you know, the applied aspect of the pharynx and the larynx. So next one is the paranasal sinuses, the, the typical four paranasal sinuses and you have already read the maxillary sinus and osteology aspect. So the pterygopalatine force on the pterygopalatine ganglion, the pterygopalatine force on the where your maxillary nerve enters. Okay, so you should be aware of the pterygopalatine force on ganglion, what actually it is. And the tongue, what are the muscles of tongue, the development of tongue, the nerve supply, blood supply, as well as the clinical aspect of tongue. Tongue is also very important. So if you look at ear, you have to talk about the, <coughs> the internal ear, Okay, the internal ear, the middle ear, the middle ear is the most important. Okay, the, the most important thing is the middle ear. Okay, so um, if, if you look at the middle ear, you have a, a few nerves which enters the middle ear and exits. So the middle ear, you know, it is a bit complicated. You definitely have apparent on the middle ear and also the external ear, a few important topics in external ear as well. So the eyeball, you have to talk about the outer coat, the at the middle coat as well as the inner coat okay the outer which includes your cornea or sclera and the middle coat which includes your choroids or uh, the iris and the inner is your retina right so you should and in addition to that you should definitely know about the vitreous humor and the aqueous humor and how it develops okay this is what you have to learn in eyeball the csf next coming to the neural anatomy csf how, how many how, is the, how much quantity of csf is usually generated you should be aware and uh, you should know about the basics of neural anatomy like the forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain most of them would have been aware of that starting from the basics you should learn about the spinal cord as well the spinal cord you have to know about the ascending as well as the descending tracts 
okay the ascending and the descending tracts and the brain stem the medulla oblongata the pons as well as the mid brain this is the the uh, the brain stem and the nuclei of the cranial nerves as i said you should know the functional component the special visceral afferents uh, uh, the general visceral afferent general somatic afferent so you should know all the uh, functional components and what are the nerves which has that particular functional component that's very very important and the cerebellum the cerebellum you should know about the clinical aspect of the cerebellum and the fourth ventricle the third ventricle and the lateral ventricles very important as far as neuroanatomy is concerned and the cerebrum you will deal about the thalamus hypothalamus the corpus striatum corpus callosum those are all the very important things which you should you will read come under the cerebrum and the pathways the pathways of pain the temperature the touch olfactory auditory right so taste so all these pathways you should be thorough on it it should be in your fingertips so <clears throat> these are all the various things which you should read from the textbooks okay which are all the, these are all things which you should read from the textbooks okay now coming to the pulse of the dentist so you, you if you see here uh, you will have around osteology salivary thyroid glands mouth pharynx larynx tongue vascular supply of edenic nerve supply of edenic muscles of edenic embryology miscellaneous as well as synopsis so these are all the few things which is given in your pulse of dentist and i have written up uh, the mcqs which are given in a particular topic okay so if you look at all these topics as well as mcq totally it will come under 563 mcqs so 563 mcqs is what you get exposed to anatomy in pulse or dentist so 563 mcqs plus your synopsis this will be your 563 mcqs plus synopsis is your pulse so if you if we, if you look at the time table which is framed by me i have given 5 to 7 days of anatomy okay 5 to 7 days of anatomy if if we take calculation approximately you will read 100 mcqs or you should read 100 mcqs per day which will include around 80 85 mcqs plus your synopsis aspect okay and your previous year mcqs plus the textbook notes textbook topics which i have mentioned in the which i have mentioned before previously these are all the textbook topics so this is the basic split up or basic topics which you should read in anatomy and i have an image of it if you want you just dm me to my instagram page i'll send you the image of all the topics you just write it down and then you tick whatever you read and you make sure you cover all the topics that is what i have said in the previous videos you should have a you should have a complete knowledge about all the topics you should cover everything that is what is will be missing in your basic guides which you should fulfill from the textbooks right so once you correlate this and you read that is going to be the best thing you can ever see okay now uh, thank you for watching this video and the next video we will uh, look about another subject the split up the split out of another subject i will give you the list of topics uh, what are all the topics from the textbook and what are the topics which is given in your pulse and the total number of estimated days how to split about it okay so i hope you like this video and uh, do share with your friends if you like this video and thank you for watching this have a great day